In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a gorgeous custom mouse cursor that magically snaps to elements. We'll do that with Elementor Pro and without any additional plugin. Now you should be able to do it without Elementor Pro, but that would mean additional plugins. And if you're already using Elementor Pro for your website, then one less plugin is always nice. So the tutorial is super easy. You don't need to know how to code. All you need to know is how to copy and paste. And the whole thing can literally be done in just minutes. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at what we're going to build. So as you can see, when I move the mouse around, you can see our custom mouse cursor with a white outline, a semi-transparent background, and a red dot in the middle. Now let's take a look at what happens when I interact with the elements. So as you can see, it magically snaps to the menu elements. And this one here has a different shape. Now let's take a look at another page. So let's go into this page. And as you can see here, when I hover over the first column, it magically snaps. So whether you just want to use the custom cursor as is, or whether you want to use the snapping feature, I'm gonna show it to you, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to implement it with Elementor Pro. But first of all, let's give credit where it's due, because in this tutorial, we're going to use a script called Magic Mouse, and it was created by this person here, which name I don't want to butcher. So thanks a lot for this lightweight and superb script, which I had to tweak just a tiny bit to make it work within Elementor Pro. Okay, so this is what we're going to start with. As you can see now, if I move the mouse, nothing is happening because this is just a fresh install without the completed tutorial. Prerequisites. So the only thing you need apart from WordPress is Elementor and Elementor Pro. That's what you should have installed regardless of the theme you're using. And if you don't have Elementor Pro, you'll find a handy link in the description below. This is an affiliate link, so it means that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on one of my links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and the commission actually helps support the channel. Now, the second thing you need is the companion blog post for which you'll find a link in the description below. And in this blog post, you will find all the code you need to complete this tutorial okay let's set things up so back in wordpress you want to go to elementor and then you want to go to custom code then click on add new custom code and we're going to add magic mouse.js you want to keep it located in the head and next we want to go and copy the code that you'll find in the companion blog post i'm just going to copy this and go back and i'm just going to paste Next, I'm going to click on publish and it's going to ask me where do you want to display your code? I want to include it on the entire site. So I'm just going to click here and that's it. So this is where all of the magic happens, but we need more. So let's go to add new and this time we want it to be in the body. So body and so let me show you body and once again, let's go and copy our code. So it's the second block. I'm just going to paste it. Once again, I click on publish. I want to add it on the entire website and I'm just going to click on save and close. Now, as you can see here, we have some error notifications. Now, the first notification says that options is not defined, which is normal because it was defined in the first code. And the rest of the notification says that strings must use single quote, but it actually works with double quotes. So don't panic. Okay, next we want to add the CSS at a global level. So we want to go to the front end of our website and then we want to click on edit with Elementor. Next, you want to click on the hamburger icon here at the top left then click on site settings and here where it says custom CSS, just click. And this is where we're going to paste our code. So once again, I'm going to take the code that I got from the companion blog post and I'm just going to paste it here. Now let me update. And as you can see, it works. So let's go back to the front end. So this is our front end that has not been refreshed yet. So as you can see, when I move the mouse around, nothing happens. Now let me refresh and bear in mind, you need to refresh. If you just refresh with F5 or Command R on the Mac, nothing is going to happen. You actually need to press Shift. So on the Mac, it will be Command plus Shift plus R, which is just going to empty the cache of this page. So command plus shift plus R, and I guess on a PC should be control shift R. It takes a little bit more time than a normal refresh. Okay, and now it works. So as you can see, 
it works. And you need to do that every time you make some changes to the CSS. Even if you don't have a caching plugin, you need to do this if you want to see the changes reflected. Now at this stage, if you're happy with this, then fine. As you can see, it works fine, but there's no snapping as we saw earlier on. So let me show you once again. This was the initial demo. And as you can see here, it snaps to the elements, except from the second one, but for the rest, it snapped to the elements. But in our version, it doesn't snap. It just goes over it, tweaking the options. So in this segment, as we've just seen, I'm going to show you how to make the menu snappy, but also the button that you can see here, same thing. So it's snappy and same thing for the column here. Okay. So first of all, let's start with our navigation. So back in WordPress, you want to go to appearance menus. And then if we toggle the first navigation item, you can see that there's no place where we can add a CSS class. And that's precisely what we need if we want to make the magic happen. So for that, just click on screen options at the top right of the window and then make sure that CSS classes is actually ticked. And once it's ticked, you can click back on screen options to close it. And now, as you can see, we have a field for CSS classes. So I'm just going to paste the CSS classes that you'd find once again in the companion blog post. So there are two. So the first one is magic hover, as you can see here. Then there is a space and then magic dash hover double underscore square. But you don't need to remember that. Just go and copy and paste. So I got both classes here. Now let me click on save menu. Okay, so now it's saved. Now let's go back to the front end of our website. I haven't refreshed yet. So as you can see, the behavior is just like it was no snapping. And now let me do a command shift R. Don't forget the shift. We want to empty the, um, the cache of the page. And now, as you can see, it snaps. So let me make this bigger. It snaps. Okay. And the other ones don't snap because they don't have the class. So let's go back and now let me show you for the second one. I'm going to do something a bit different. So I'm going to paste the class once again, but I'm going to remove the latter part. So I'm going to remove this bit as well as the space. So all I have left is magic dash hover. So let me click on save menu. Now let's go back and let me refresh. And now let me make this bigger. As you can see, it snaps, but without the square shape. Now, as you can see, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is add the classes where you want to see the magic happen. So let's see how we can do it for this button here. So let's go back and then let's go back to the front end of our website. And then I'm just going to click on edit with Elementor. Okay. And now let's select our button here. And then we want to go to the advanced tab. And where it says classes, I'm just going to paste both classes. And if you want to see the whole of the code, once again, this is it. Okay. So let's click on update and now let's go back to the front end. Let me refresh. And now if I hover over it, you can see the snappy feature. Don't forget when you refresh to do command plus shift plus R snappy, snappy. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at our homes page. So on this page, I have three columns that are clickable and I've already covered in a previous tutorial video how to do that. So if you're interested, make sure you check that video on the channel. But right now, what we want to do is to have that snappy effect here on the first column. So let's go back to WordPress. Then I'm going to go back to the front end. Let me go to the homes page. Click edit with Elementor. OK, and now I'm going to select my first column. Then let me go to advanced. Once again, I'm just going to paste both classes here in the CSS classes field. Let me click on update. Now let's go back. Let me refresh with command plus shift plus R. Okay. And now as you can see, the magic happens. Now let's talk about some of the other options that we can play with. So let's go back to the front end of our website. Then let's click on edit with Elementor. Next, we want to click on the hamburger icon in the top left of the window, click on site settings, and then we want to click on custom CSS. And now let me make this bigger so we can actually see what we're doing. So don't be scared if you're scared of code. Don't be scared. You don't need to code. I'm briefly going to explain 
some of the things that you may want to change. So first of all, as you can see here, it says that the minimum width is 1367 pixels, which means that for devices under that width, the code won't happen. And think about it, you don't want this to happen on a tablet or on a mobile because it wouldn't really work with the, with the mouse pointer. So that number was made to accommodate the iPad Pro, which is a very popular tablet and all tablets below that resolution. Now you may want to change that number, so feel free to experience what suits you best. Next, let's take a look at this line here. And actually added this line from the original code because I wanted to be able to set a semi-transparent background in the mouse cursor. So if you know CSS, obviously that's gonna be a piece of cake, but if you don't, fear not, it's very, very easy. So there are many ways you can set colors with code and one of these ways is RGBA. So there are three values, the first value here, the second, the third, and then we have the fourth one is actually the transparency level. So 000 is the RGBA code for black and I'll show you in a moment where you can find those codes. And 0 0.2 is the semi-transparency. Now, what if you wanna change the transparency? So I'm going to switch this from 0 0.2 to 1. So as you can see now it's completely opaque, no transparency at all. So let's go back and let's change it to 0 0.5. Let's close this and now as you can see it's semi-transparent again but it's darker than previously because it's 0 0.5 instead of 0 0.2. Now, you may be wondering, what if you want to use another color or where do you find these codes? So let's go to a website called Coolors, which is completely free. Let's click on start the generator. Okay, let's try some other palettes. All you need to do is uh, click on space and it's gonna change the color palette. Okay, let's pick this one here. So all you need to do is click on the code that you see here. So let's click. And as you can see, it says it's a hex code. Now hex is one of the other ways you can set the values, but we don't need that, right? We want RGB. So just click on the little arrow and it's gonna give you a list. And as you can see, we have RGB here. So the first value is 244, the second is 239, and the third is 136. So let's go back. Let's go back up here. So two, Oops, 244. Next we have 239. Next we had 136. Oops, 136. Okay, so let's close this. And as you can see, it's a semi-transparent version of this. So pretty easy, right? Now, another thing that you may want to do is to change the color of the pointer. So first of all, let's go back and let's put this back to black. So zero, 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 and 0 0.2. Okay, next you wanna to go to the block where it says magic pointer, as you can see here, and you wanna scroll down until you find this line, background dash FFF. So this is the color of the pointer. So you could do something as red, for example. So you just type red, but you need to remove the pound sign, okay? So just red and as you can see I got a red dot in the middle now if you want to use hexadecimal values so let me go back where it says red and now let's go back to coolers and we're going to do the opposite so just click back on the little arrow here and this time we want the hexadecimal value so hex and we're just going to copy all of this Let's go back, let's put the pound sign back and then the color code. Okay, now let's close this. And as you can see, we have our colored dot. It doesn't get easier than this. Now, because you don't know what's gonna be behind the cursor, I found that what works fine for most people is just to have the white outline, the semi-transparent black background and the dot in the middle. Now you can change the color of the dot, doesn't really change that much, but initially in the original script, it was transparent. I mean, not semi-transparent, but fully transparent. And the outline was white. And for example, in this kind of navigation, you couldn't even see what was going on. 
So once again, let's take a look at what we've built. So here we have our snappy navigation. Here we have our snappy call to action. And here we have our snappy column. Now there is one thing left to do if you get any value out of this video and it's simply to give this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a split second, but it's gonna help this channel tremendously. Now, if you're serious about web design, make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash, yes, I said smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna create a killer brand identity for yourself or for your clients, I created a brand identity guidelines template that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. I'm trying to build the content that I wish I had when I got started, and I want to help you thrive as a web designer, whether you want to be employed or go the freelance route. Now, if you want to level up your web designer game, you may want to watch one of the videos appearing on screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.